I just want to check with you all. Everybody set, ready to go? Audio working okay? All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being with us here today. We're going to be making an announcement about unprecedented action taken by the state of Texas. Before I make that announcement, however, I want to recognize a few people who gather with us today. We have the uh, Commissioner George P. Bush, who is the Commissioner of the uh, General Land Office, and uh, we are on uh, property that is managed by the General Land Office, and he will be telling you more about what he has done uh, to help make this process success, success, su su successful, if I can say it. We have with us uh, Senator Kelly Hancock. Uh, he is uh, the chairman uh, of the Senate uh, Border Security Committee. We have Representative James White, who is the chairman of the Texas House Homeland Security Committee. Uh, we also have with us, uh, I think uh, behind me, we have uh, Director Steve McCraw, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety. We have the adjutant general for the uh, Texas National Guard, Tracy Norris, and we have General Ulis, who is the general in charge of uh, the border response for the state of Texas. Uh, and I have with me the uh, chairman of the Texas Facilities Commission, Steve Alvis. And I don't know if, if Novak is here behind me, but I, I do want to express my gratitude to the executive director uh, for the Texas Facilities Commission, uh, Mike Novak. So let me tell you what's going on. Texas is taking what truly is unprecedented action by uh, any state ever for a state to build a wall on our border to secure and safeguard the sovereignty of the United States as well as our own state. And this unprecedented action is needed for one single reason, and that's because the Biden administration has failed to do its job as required by the Constitution, as required by laws passed by Congress, to enforce the immigration laws of the United States of America. And the consequences of Biden's failure to do his job are staggering. Already this year, there have been more than 1.2 million people who have been apprehended coming across the border illegally. Those are the people apprehended and do not count all of those who were not apprehended. Those people, they're not just coming from Mexico. They're coming through Mexico from more than 150 countries across the entire globe, including people coming from countries who are hostile to the United States of America, countries like China, Iran, Syria, Russia. Also, devastatingly, what's coming across our border are people who are involved in human trafficking, which is a modern-day slavery where they are trafficking women and young children, sometimes engaged in sex trafficking, not just on the way to the border, but after they come through the border. And we're seeing something devastating that the Biden administration is not doing enough to respond to, and that is the enormous amount of the deadly drug fentanyl that's coming across our border. Two milligrams of fentanyl is a deadly dose, and we have already apprehended enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in Texas, California, New York, Illinois, and Florida combined. There was a report that just came out yesterday saying that the number one cause of death in the United States of America for people in the age group between 18 and 45 is not COVID, is not car wrecks, is not cancer. Instead, the number one cause of death for that demographic group is fentanyl. Joe Biden has facilitated the death of those people by the open border policies that he has allowed to take place here in Texas, and it must be stopped. The people who are making money off of this are the gangs and the cartels, including MS-13 gang, gang members who have been apprehended here in Texas, as well as other types of gangs and cartels that our DPS and National Guard are working to apprehend every single day. And then people in this region know about the devastating death and tragedy of a 59-year-old woman and her 22-year-old daughter just over in Hidalgo County near Mission, where a smuggler T-boned them in a car wreck and killed them. There are deadly consequences 
because of Biden's open border policies. And it's those deadly consequences that the state of Texas is stepping up to address through multiple strategies, including this unprecedented effort to build the border wall that you see behind us. This border wall that you see behind us is a replication of the border wall that President Trump put up. Same material, same concept. Uh, those, if, if you look at it from here, it doesn't look like uh, those bars are all that big. I have with me the bar. This, this is a steel bar. It's heavy and it's wide. People aren't making it through those steel bars. Just as unprecedented as the action that we're taking is the speed within which we have taken this action. It was just six months ago that I signed a letter authorizing the Texas Facilities Commission to begin building this wall. Just after that, I signed two pieces of legislation passed by the legislature that provided $3 billion for Texas to step up and secure our border, including money allocated to build this border wall. This border wall uh, is not only going up fast, but it's, it's going to be equipped to make sure that we will be able to better safeguard our state because in addition to the wall that you see, once it is completed, it will have multiple detection devices so that we will be able to constantly observe what's going on and uh, uh, quickly interdict anything or anybody trying to get through. And when they do try to get through, if they are able to do that, because of the policies that we have in place in the state of Texas now, the people that we apprehend will not be turned over to the federal ad administration just for release. People that we apprehend, they will be charged with trespassing in the state of Texas. And those charges will lead them to being sent to jail. Now what we're doing here in building the border wall is uh, just part of a multi-prong strategy to do the federal government's job. We have the National Guard as well as the Texas Department of Public Safety, about 10,000 of them all together, who are working day and night to make apprehensions of people coming across the border and to push back and deter and to send back people who are coming across the border. They are establishing barriers of all different kinds to deter and to prevent people from coming into Texas illegally, including these uh, massive containers that you see on 18-wheelers that you see on these uh, massive container ships. They have been put down as well as razor wire has been put down in an attempt to uh, prevent people from coming across the border. They have uh, put up boat barricades in the water to deter the smugglers who are using these rafts to bring people across the border, uh, pushing them back to Mexico so that they will not be successful in bringing people and contraband into our state, into our country. And as I pointed out before, they're using this strategy to make sure that they are not caught and released. Instead, they are arrested and jailed in Texas. Importantly, this wall that is behind me now would not have been possible without the heavy involvement of two groups. One of those groups is the Texas legislature who provided that $3 billion in funding that is needed for Texas to step up and protect the sovereignty of our state and sovereignty of our country. And the second are the people who are working tirelessly every single day to execute what must be done to build the wall, and that is the Texas Facilities Commission. Now I'm going to introduce uh, the chair of the Texas Facilities Commission in one second. I do, however, want to say this. I know that in addition to the funding that the state is providing to this, I know that there are many Americans who want to be a part of this. Many Americans who are asking, what can they do to help Texas build the border wall? There is a site I'm going to give you the address of where you can go, but I want to let you know that Texas has already received well over $54 million from our fellow Americans who want to see this wall built. If you want to help in that regard, go to borderwall.texas.gov. That's borderwall.texas.gov, where you can do your part to help secure the sovereignty and safety of this country by helping Texas build more of this border wall. 
to tell you more about what the Texas Facilities Commission is doing to achieve this goal, I will call up at this time the chairman of the Texas Facilities Commission, Stephen Alvis. Thank you, Governor. Come on. There you go. Thank you so much, Governor. Um, I tell you, the, the governor's leadership in this, uh, clear vision he gave us in June, to help restore the public safety by delivering the most border infrastructure in the shortest possible time frame. The entire team of TFC, including all the commissioners, Commissioner Bailey's here today, Commissioner Bittencourt's here today, and our fearless leader, Executive Novak, here today has worked 18-hour days for that 180, I can assure you. And, um, you know, it takes a lot to create a, a, a whole new department to build such a billion-dollar type program, and uh, we've, we've done it in, in high time. We quickly uh, put out an RFP, followed all state procurement rules. We continue to be good stewards of the state dollars through General Broadus and Admiral Sellen, helped us create an RFP, and we awarded it to Michael Baker International and Hewitt Zoller. And uh, it was about 30 days later, we quickly got an RFP and chose five very fine contractors for design build. The first one was issued to Facilico. That's building this wall here. Yes, they worked on the federal wall. Did a great job. And you can see in transparency, this, this wall's gone up in basically five days. So you can imagine that we could do about 200 feet a day. But this couldn't have happened without a collaboration of the state. It couldn't have happened without Mr. Bush. He jumped into action immediately. This was identified by Director McGraw as a, as a very difficult crime area progressing through here. You can see federal wall is just to my left, and this is state wall. And Commissioner Bush hopped in high priority, and we worked out the details to start the very first construction project number one on this wall. Other agencies had to get involved. Our state controller, Glenn Hager, had to take a role. Things that would take two to three months took two to three days. Anytime a special meeting was needed and something was ready to go, we'd call it. TCEQ, Environmental Quality, had to get involved, and they set a record pace. Texas Historical Society and the Texas Military Department. That we streamlined every step which we're known to do in Texas under the governor's leadership. So 22 days ago, we awarded the first construction contract, mobilized, and got this much wall up, and we had to shut down three days for weather. This is a mile seven segment of the wall. Yes, it's on state-owned property by the GLO, Star County. Uh, the contract we awarded it to Silicos for eight miles, and that'll be different segments either direction that we have to fill gaps. Most of the project force, all is local, utilization of local suppliers. For example, this steel came from McAllen, Strong Steel is the company. We have a 1,254 miles of border on Texas. And where we're focusing first is through that collaboration with the Department of Public Safety. They know where they need the help the worst. And they have done an amazing job down here fulfilling what should be the federal government's role. So with that, Governor, uh, I'll pass it back to you. And uh, appreciate you, your leadership in this. It couldn't have been done without you. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and next we have the uh, Commissioner of the General Land Office uh, who oversees the land that we're on right now, who's played uh, an integral role uh, in this mission that we are accomplishing right now. Thank you, Governor, and thank you everyone for this momentous occasion in the history of the state of Texas and the history of the General Land Office because it's on state acreage 
that we stand today where the people of Texas finally said, enough is enough. Enough of open borders, enough of disorderly chaos led by coyotes, smugglers, and traffickers and folks that would do harm to our state. And that if the Washington DC establishment doesn't do their job, Texas will. What brings us to this fight is the state of Texas manages 3,100 acres. Uh, we lease this acreage to a, a local farmer that has raised fruits and vegetables here for generations. But yet this year alone, he has seen on average 100 illegal immigrants on average every single day come across this acreage, destroying his crops, destroying his business. My singular duty is to protect the most important asset of the state of Texas, and that's the school children, because it's all leasing revenues from state lands, whether it be oil and gas or real estate and grazing leases that go to the benefit of public schools. And so earlier this year, I commissioned my staff to work with Texas Facilities Commission, Governor's Office, to examine every single possible avenue to defend our border and to defend the state of Texas. And so today is a culmination of extraordinary work. Uh, it's, it's harder than it looks to build this type of wall and to do it in such a quick fashion under budget and in time. And so uh, I'm so thankful of the leadership of Governor Abbott and his commitment and his drive to stay on this issue. Uh, and I really wanna thank also our law enforcement that are gonna keep the watch as we approach Christmas so that you and I can open our Christmas presents in a safe fashion with our families. That starts with our border patrol, our guardsmen, Department of Public Safety, county officials, local law enforcement. Everybody is pitching in in this historic fashion to withstand the largest surge of illegal immigration that we have seen in our lifetimes. Thank you, Governor. Giola will be, be with you 100% of the way. Thank you very much. So, Commissioner Bush said something that's very important, that is, it's a lot harder than it looks. And I want to take a moment to express gratitude to the people who are putting in the hard work. Those who, uh, some are over here, there may be some behind me. Those who are wearing the hard hats and the yellow vest, give it up for the men and women who are actually erecting this border wall. With that, we'll be happy to take a few questions. Yes. So we, we are building this like any private property owner would have the right to build a wall or a fence in their own yard. Uh, and we're not using federal land uh, and we're using state land or going forward, we will be using some land that we uh, are working with uh, private property owners uh, to build on their property. And so the federal government has no authority whatsoever to interfere with our ability to build this wall and to secure our state. Yes. But I'll, we'll go both you, you then you. Sorry. So, Governor, you had mentioned that a few pieces of funding were going to come to the wall, but I hadn't heard how much taxpayer money had to be put to this. So, how much is that number? Well, we, we didn't do the division to find out how much each taxpayer paid. I can tell you this, however, is far more than what a Texas taxpayer should have to pay. The reason is this is the federal government's job, and we're only doing it because the federal government has abandoned its duty to enforce the laws passed by the United States Congress. All President Biden has to do is simply enforce the current immigration laws of the United States of America. And because he is not doing that, Texas taxpayers are having to step up and do his job. Yes. Well, I can't give you a precise breakdown for this reason, uh, and that is the, the cost per mile will differ depending upon where the location is. There are different types of locations, different types of walls that will be used, uh, different uh, standards that must be met in order to have a safe wall put up. And so that cost will vary mile by mile based upon the location where the wall is going up. Yes, sir. So 
So you, you bring up the issue of, about what I hear is billions of dollars of materials that American taxpayers have already paid for that's lying on the ground in the real Grand Valley area that's not being used by the federal government to build a wall. That's a total waste of American taxpayer dollars. Because that property and, and material is owned by the federal government, uh, we need them to provide it to us. The Biden administration has done nothing to offer that property to us whatsoever. If they want to be responsible stewards for taxpayer money, they should be providing that material either to the state of Texas or to the contractors who are working with the state of Texas. Otherwise, the Biden administration uh, has on its resume wasting billions of taxpayer dollars doing absolutely nothing. Hundred percent. Yeah, we we are asking them, uh, and we're getting no response whatsoever. Two more questions. Hi, uh, Governor. I have a question. Uh, you talked about you know trespassing Texas and migrants uh, being sent to jail. There's currently a lawsuit by ACLU about migrants being held, held in jail uh, longer than they're supposed to, and that those who do truly qualify for asylum are not being given the opportunity. How do you respond? To that? So Texas uh, has worked to make sure that uh, all the legal standards uh, that are necessary for anybody who's arrested or detained or jailed are met. We, the state of Texas is coming out of pocket uh, to provide uh, free defense for these criminals uh, who have been apprehended. And so all the proper procedures that are required to be followed are being followed. Last question. Yes. And again, that, that's a repeat of the question I just got, but the, the cost of the wall varies. It, 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 listen, well, the, the projected cost varies on multiple factors. One is uh, which wall will be built, what is the terrain like, uh, is it going to have to uh, involve something uh, that would involve you know, protecting overflow water from the river or something like that? Uh, will it be on sturdy ground? Will it be on uh, ground that, that uh, is going to be more serpentine in nature? Uh, and it, what, what land uh, will it be on? And so there's so many factors, and then there, there's the number of miles involved. And so all of those factors are variables uh, that will weigh into the overall cost. Do you have a projected range Well, it, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you that the, the projected range is we're going to spend as much as it takes to build as much wall as we possibly can. Great. Thank you. Oh, that's right. So I want you all to know that we, we are going to show you uh, the, the actual – uh, construction of the wall uh, and I'm supposed to press on this mic right here and so this is the signal uh, for the workers to actually begin working on the wall I'm going to give it to them right now panel up
see a white satellite. Let me see. I see two tents there. It's, it's the two tents. He's in, he's in both of the two tents. Yeah, that's exactly. So that's yeah. Here's the. If I uh, if I drive over there. It's kind of weird because when you look at it aside, it almost looks like wood. Big weed, meaning you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, the team, we have a special response team that's putting the uh, Constitutional Wire team, the GPS, identify the landowners. Yeah. Uh, we can put up a mile. 